Hi everyone, my name is Peter. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound. Today I want to tackle the concept of latency in main stage. Latency being the amount of time that elapses between when you play a note and when the computer kicks the sound back to you. Um, anytime we're making music on the computer, we have to allow time for the computer to process what you're asking it to do. And so latency is, um, is something that we need to learn to manage as, as people making music on the computer. Um, in order to optimize latency, there are two things that we always have to balance. And one is how much are we asking the computer to do with how fast are we asking the computer to do it. And we have to balance those two things together. It's important to understand that there's no universal setting that's going to work for everyone. Your optimal latency settings are going to depend on not only your computer's processor, the CPU, um, but also on the complexity of your patches and how you play them as well. So in this video, I will show you how to experiment to find the settings that are going to work best for you. First of all, you want to experiment using your most complex patch. You want to use a patch that has the most going on uh, with intense requirements for your system. I've set up a patch for this video that's meant to be over the top. It's got four different layers going on. It's got several plugins um, for each instrument. Um, and and, and in, your experiment, you, ex, in your experiment, you want to um, ask your computer to do uh, as much or a little bit more than you would in your own real life situation. Um, now, to control how, how fast we're going to ask the computer to do all this, let's open the main stage preferences. So you can go up to the main stage menu and select preferences that way. I always uh, press command comma and open preferences that way. We're going to be working in the audio tab. So click on the second tab. I'm going to assume that you already have your output and your input devices selected. And the three things that we're going to want to pay attention to are the in and out buffer size, the in and out safety buffer, and then uh, this information down here, the resulting latency. And if you click on this, you can alternate between resulting round trip latency and resulting output latency. Uh, if you're only using software instruments, this is the one you need to pay attention to, just the output latency, because uh, unless you're feeding audio into main stage, you're not going to have any input latency. So if you're just working with software latency, software instruments, just pay attention to resulting output latency. All right, so let's start with a low buffer size so we can hear clearly hear the effects of asking the computer to do too much too fast. With the safety buffer unchecked, I'm going to lower the buffer size down to 32 samples. That's very, very low. Uh, so now I want you to, I'm going to click Apply Changes. Now I want you to uh, watch the CPU meter and listen so you hear the effects of setting the uh, buffer size too low. So you can hear that the sound is very distorted. There were a couple of dropouts in there as well. So we're clearly asking the computer to do too much too fast. Um, the good thing is, there was one good thing in that, and that is if you look here, the resulting output latency of this setting is only 2.2 milliseconds, which is nothing. Um, you're not going to notice, nobody's going to notice that amount of, of latency at all. Um, the problem is that the sound was horrible. So we want to find uh, the lowest buffer size we can use that we still get that clean sound. So let's um, increase the sample si or the buffer size all the way up to the maximum number, uh, 1,024 samples. Okay, now as you're going to see here, the resulting output latency of this is almost 25 milliseconds. Okay, we might need to give it a second to adjust. I also have my uh, screen capture software and recording software running at the same time. So let's try that again. And there's some weird sounds in there too. Um, this experiment is going horribly, I think, because of my screen capture software. So when I was doing it before, I was able to get down to 128 samples. And then that was clean and that offered uh, just kind of the lowest, that was the lowest setting that I could play at and uh, get a clean sound. Um, actually, it started to break up at 128 between two, 128 and 256. So what we can do at that point is we can set it on 128. And then click this I.O. safety buffer, which is going to uh, put it somewhere between one, 128 and 256. 
and this is normally the place where I can um, play without uh, the sound breaking up and it's it's nice and stable so uh, we're gonna see if this works <laughs> So now it's cooperating and you can hear that it's it's working okay. Now, if you have to go higher than 256, you're going to want to simplify what you do on this end. Okay, so you're not necessarily asking your computer to do it too fast, but you're asking it to do too much. If you have to go higher than 256 without the IO safety buffer on, in my opinion. So uh, if you have to go 256 with the, with the IO safety buffer on or more, you need to simplify what you're doing over here. There's some definite things we can do over here to simplify things. We need to look for some intensive plugins for one thing. Uh, Space Designer is uh, the most CPU intensive reverb plugin. Delay Designer is, is the most CPU in intensive plugin for delay. Okay, so what we can do is we can replace those with um, lower in intensity plugins that are probably going to sound just as good. Um, the other thing is I don't think we really need four channel strips going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate um, this. And um, instead of going through and replacing this, I've already set up this uh, patch over here. And this has um, Silver Verb instead of um, Space Designer. And this has the Stereo Delay instead of Delay Designer. So now when I play this... Still one dropout in there again that's just because my screen capture software so I apologize for that but if you're watching the CPU up here it was a lot lower and, and the computer was taxed a lot less um, just by simplifying my patch okay so again it's balancing how much are you asking the computer to do versus how fast are you asking it to do and sometimes you have to give and take on either side in order to find what's going to work best for your playing situation. Now remember again, there's no universal setting that's going to work for everybody. There's probably also not one setting that's always going to work 100% of the time for you because anytime you're using a different computer, anytime you're using different patches or a different audio interface with different driver, um, it might require you going back and doing the same experiment to figure out your optimal settings for that given situation. So I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, feel free to email me, Peter at Our Worship Sound, if you have any more questions regarding main stage, or let me know if there's anything else I can do a video on that would uh, help you sort through some of this stuff. Uh, would you please go ahead and subscribe to Our Worship Sound on YouTube? Uh, and also click the link at the bottom uh, right below this email, first thing in the description to uh, sign up for the free email list so you can stay up to date with everything that's going on with Our Worship Sound. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter and or Facebook, and uh, we can keep in touch that way. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you soon.